We Brits are a nation of obsessive collectors. Across the country, there are storage units straining at the seams, wow. <laughs> groaning garages, and stuffed garden sheds. Wow, oh I've God. forgotten how much stuff I've had. Home to dreams. My director's chair. Past lives. That's unbelievable. And untold baggage. And we're drowning in it. Heaven's sake, what are all these things? But among the clutter and the junk... Empty box! <laughs> my mission is to find buried treasure. 1500 to £2,500 there. Wow. Gosh. <laughs> Unlock memories. There's a lot of memories in two boxes. And turn trash into cash. 260, 270, 280. <laughs> Welcome to the world of storage hoarders. Our first long-term collector is Debbie Ward, who spent nearly £1,500 on storage over the past two years. Her friend Lucia thinks it's time to stop. So how did this storage problem begin? Uh, when my mum passed away uh, three years ago, we moved into her house. Um, there were a lot of my old bits and pieces there. And because we needed to make room for the, the children, I needed somewhere to put it. So quick solution, storage unit, bunged it all in there, forgot about it. But generally, over the time, just kept adding to it. Debbie lives near Dudley in the West Midlands, birthplace of comedian Lenny Henry. Her mum's old house has given her young family much more space, but by clearing out the unwanted stuff, they've created a storage nightmare. All of the stuff that's in there is either no good, never used, it's just in there and forgotten about. Doting daughter Debbie was very close to her mum Maggie, who passed away at the age of 67. She also has many of her old possessions in storage, which are difficult to part with. I was really quite close to my mum. Um, even when we moved out, I'd go round for a cup of tea, and uh, I do really miss her. Some of the things um, I probably will be tempted to keep, but I think I need to um, let them go. Debbie is also passionate about horses. Before I had the children, um, I was horse mad. They used to take up all my time. But family life and financial commitments made keeping her pony, Crystal, a constant struggle. Tragically, 15 years ago, Crystal had a fall and had to be put down. I've kept a saddle and a horse rug and other various bits and pieces, just purely out of sentimentality. There are lots of things here that hold memories for Debbie, whether of her horse or her mum. Got some um, plate sets of mums that I think she had for a wedding present. It's a shame to just keep them in a box in storage when um, they could be used for something. Best friend Lucia thinks facing the storage unit will be a big step forward for her. She gets quite attached to things. She likes keeping things because she, for her, I think they are linked to the memories. And, but I think now is um, a time where she really needs somebody who isn't attached to the things to tell her that it's all right to let go, because it's not letting go of her mum, it's just letting go of her mum's things. Can Lucia persuade Debbie to part with her emotional baggage? It will probably be hard, and there'll be a lot of memories in there, but, um, yeah, I think it's time to uh, kind of move on. Debbie is hoping to free up some cash to treat the family. If I do manage to sell any items at auction, I would like to um, take us on a holiday. We haven't had one for the past five years. I think I was pregnant with my youngest son the last time we had a, a holiday. Can I help Debbie clear out and put a smile on the rest of the family's faces? It's time to get stuck in. Is there anything in here that you know is of value and you might want to sell? Um, there's some Royal Dalton um, mm -hmm. plates that were my mum's and my mm -hmm. dad's. Mm -hmm. um, it's a shame to just leave them in the storage unit, so, yeah, you know, exactly. somebody might get some pleasure out of them, yes. so we'll see. Yes. I'm very excited. Can you open up, please? Yeah. Oh, dear. What are you thinking? You, you're looking forward to seeing this? I don't even know what to think. I really don't. Oh, interesting. First impressions are somewhat overwhelming. Your face has gone all flushed. <laughs> oh, God. 
That's it. I'm off. I'll leave you to it. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> now, come on. Don't tell me you want to hang on to no. this. No. No. It's impossible to see what is junk and what is treasure. It needs a lot of careful sorting. Time to get the heavies in to help, OK? I'll just go and get them and it won't take long. We'll get it all out. Oh, yes, please. All right. Take a deep breath, Debbie. It's time to get stuck in and get everything out before it falls out. What's in here, then? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Our next storage hoarder is Diana Strank. Over the past four years, her current storage has cost over £2,000. Husband Mick has been her partner in collecting crime. So where did this all start? We started putting stuff in store, it probably is about ten years ago, and all, all through the years, because we keep getting things, it's gradually mounted up to quite a lot of stuff, really. Diana lives in Ashford in Kent, gateway to the Channel Tunnel. She thinks her hoarding habit started as a child. My dad never chucked a bit of string away because he thought it might come in handy. And I, I think the bit's rubbed off on me, really. Oh, there were my dad's. Oh, I remember him showing me once, a long time ago. Some of it's mine because when my dad died and then my mum died. We used to go to um, what they call flea markets or antique fair, you know, and it sort of just got bunged up the loft for, from one house to the other and sort of gradually added bits to it and sort of collections of books and um, little trinkets and bits and bobs, you know. Oh, definitely. But Diana thinks she's not really the one to blame. I am a hoarder, but I think my husband's worse. For a natural hoarder, it didn't help marrying into the family of removers and storers of her husband, Mick. Once I've got it, I don't want to get rid of it. I'm definitely the hoarder. I'll get a box out, look through it and chuck it or whatever, and then I, I can't find anything I can chuck, so I'll put it all back again and put it back in the store. Done removals for a number of years, and uh, people give you things over years, so we do house clearances occasionally, and then I'm, I, I don't want to get rid of some of it, so I'll put it in our, in our store and, and it's been there for years and years. Mick has retired from the removals business, but he's still hoarding. However, he and Diana want to solve the storage problem in order to put something aside for the next generation of Stranks. For the wedding now, I'm going for a vintage style and a vintage theme. Oh. So what I've done, for people to find where they need to sit, I've got these luggage labels with some lace on it. Well, my granddaughter's getting married and any money that we, we managed to make at the auction or, or anywhere, it, um, we'd like to, that to go to the wedding because she has got expensive taste paper roses and things to add to that vintage feel. Oh. Oh, well, should be quite nice. Can these obsessive collectors be persuaded to divorce themselves from their hoard and help see their granddaughter walk down the aisle in style? I've sent antiques and collectibles expert Paul Hayes along to Kent to give Diana and Mick a helping hand. With Paul's help, it's time for them to open up and cut down. Are you ready for this? Yeah, quite oh, excited, I'm, really. I'm excited too. I don't know what's in here. Can, can you remember what's in here? Offhand? Oh, no. Oh, well, there we are. It's amazing, isn't it? It's like little little capsules of time. Here we go. Let's have a... Now then. Oh, there we are. No, so one or two boxes there. Well, let's get a few things out. What have we got here? I quite like that. Oh, that's a nice most of these. But that's a yeah. good old 19th century mm. engraving. So. Yeah. Oh, what right. a, what a good thing. That's a good saleable item, actually. So you found something already? Well, that's a good start. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you where we found that. In the canal, that, that was. never in the canal? Yeah, yeah actually floating in the breaking. canal. That's amazing. At Wales. Oh, there's uh, nothing untoward in there. It's 27 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I make that time you got cracking with clearing out that unit. These two cluttered souls have stacks to sort and I want them to get everything out to see their hand-me-down hoard in the cold light of day. Coming up, Debbie comes face to face with the scale of her hoard. Oh my God. <laughs> have Diana and Mick scored a hole in one? They made some very rare gold clubs. And will our hopeful hoarders be in the money when their stash goes up for auction? <laughs> We've been helping two collectors. Earlier, we met sentimental storer Debbie, whose emotions ran wild at the sight of her late mother's stored belongings. Your face has gone all flushed. <laughs> oh, God. You're feeling I a bit... I believe I've 
at all this. And lifelong magpies Diana and Mick, who've amassed a unit full of a lifetime's collecting. Oh, I'll tell you where we found that. In the canal. That, that was never in the canal? Yeah. Later, I'll be asking our antiques experts to help our hoarders sort through their unwanted items and see if there's anything of value to take to auction. To help them come to terms with their collections, they need to get everything out of their units to see exactly what they've got. I found them the space and brought in some extra muscle to help. I want them to split their possessions into categories. Keep it for those really sentimental pieces, skip it for anything old, broken or just plain awful, or sell it for the items they think could be of value. I've also added a charity area where they can put anything that's too good to chuck. With everything final out of their unit, it's a chance to see the true extent of their hoard. Debbie's pile looks like a daunting prospect. <gasps> oh my God! <laughs> I think it's come as a bit of a shock. Look at all this. <sighs> Are you sure that was only in this one unit? Are you all right, Debbie? Oh, Debbie. Debbie. It's simply too much for Debbie to take in. Memories of her mum have come flooding back. I'm so glad best friend Lucia is there for support. I think Debbie's going to need all the help she can get. Oh, God. My first thoughts were just what a load of, <laughs> load of rubbish. <laughs> but, oh, dear. I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to start, to be honest. Um... Right. Right. Is this... Uh... Oh, Please right. tell me this is something I can go away. Oh, well, um, that, <laughs> that was um, given to uh, my mum by uh, one of the regulars in, in, in the pub where she used to work. I used to call her a bit of a witch, which she wasn't. <laughs> Things like that are no use to me right. well. Have you but... got Have you got a place to display it where it looks pretty? No. Will you ever use it? No. Can it go? Oh, uh... Well, Lucia is on the right track, but Debbie's in a bit of a muddle. They'll be here all day at this rate. I think she needs a helping hand, so I'm going in. Hello <laughs> there. Provided I can actually get there. <laughs> oh, my goodness, there's a lot more than I thought there would be, isn't there? Do you think there's a lot more than you thought there would be? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry. You look slightly panicked. Oh, I am. <laughs> It's starting to look like Debbie has hung on to everything she's ever used and a few things she never will. Do you wallpaper? Do I wallpaper? Yes. No. There's wallpaper. Does, it, does there Andy? Does yeah, Andy? It always comes in handy anyway. But for hold on, hold on. What does it come in handy for? It's always handy to have a wallpaper pasting table. Isn't How it? often is it? I don't know. Well, we do need to, to decorate. We've got that one wall with paper on, so... Do you need a wallpaper table for it? Yeah. Do you actually need this? When did you last use it? I've never used it, apart from a car boot. <laughs> so it's... Uh, oh, right, OK, I'll get rid of it. Skip. <sighs> Good girl. Diana and Mick, with their storage and removals background, have a nice, orderly pile to deal with. There's just lots of it. God, look at all this lot, Mick. Where did it all come from? Crikey, O'Reilly. Now that everything's out, it's time to get stuck in. I'm beginning to wonder if Diana and Mick have any idea what they've been storing for all this time. So who would have who would have collected these? My dad yeah. did have these. So what? So why did he collect dolls? Do you think? I don't know. He used to collect some weird things, really, didn't he? My dad. Yeah, anything. Would they be in presents he, for you at the time? Do you think? Or? No, no. Um, no, he he wouldn't ever let us touch anything. Else. All right. So let's put these on the cell pile then, shall we? So the cell pile begins. So you, you, your dad used to show you them, did he say? You yeah, he actually... did. He right. did used to show us when we was young, we you know. Because we didn't have television yeah. then, did we? But they can't blame everything on Diana's dad. Well, yeah, that's a musical, Teddy. Is it musical? He don't wind up, does he? Yeah. I can't hear anything. He's there. Oh, yes. It's probably 1930s, uh, something like that, 20s, 30s. Yeah? It's oh, a real lovely. mix of trash and treasure. It's all the ear trumpet. And I don't think they know what I half of it is. Is it? Oh, is it a stethoscope, is it? Well, I don't know. Really know. I think it's an ear trumpet. Yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> I think that's I an ear trumpet. Yeah, that's quite, that's quite interesting. People love old medical things. And some of it seems to have more than just curiosity value. 
Nice thing here. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's... Um, that's a bonny piece. Biscuit. It's 18... It's a biscuit box, yeah. 18 something, that is. That's a good good item, that. Nice piece of Victorian yeah. silver plate. Yeah. So I'll put that on your... Uh, your cell table. Okay. Paul's also spotted a large selection of prints and engravings that the pair have acquired over the years. What I'm sorting out, you see, the, the better engravings, I think you'll be able to sell. The cheap, the cheaper ones, you won't. So. No. 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 Hidden in Diana and Mick's many boxes, Paul has come across what looks like a lost sporting treasure. Michael. Uh, Diane. Now then, here we are. We found something here. These have potential. Oh. Who, who's the golfer? Well, well he, he likes his golf. We both but... like golf. But... Right, OK. Well, these are good golf clubs, these. Who, who do these belong to, do you know? Uh, well, they belong to me, but... They're, they're, they're rustic and they're antique, you know, people love yeah. that. Uh, but you've got quite a, quite a few of them. And, um, I think what we need to do is to find somebody that maybe specialises in, in sports memorabilia or uh, has a real keen interest in golf yeah. to go through them. And I think you could do quite well. Paul has sent Diane and Mick to Ashford Golf Club to meet Paul Sherman. Pro golfer for over 20 years will be able to let them know if cashing in on their sporting hoard is a long shot. They're all made by the same oh, person. Or handmade. Handmade, yeah. yeah. Oh. They're all part of a set. Um, a guy called Joe Anderson, who is based in Perth in Scotland. Um, he made clubs from early 1900s um, up until well, he died in his 80s, 19, oh. in 1960. But so you, again, you've got a putter. You've then got a mashi which was a bit like a seven iron now. Um, so it's it Mashi, yeah. made by Joe Anderson, Perth. Um, it, it's, it's part of a set, obviously it's not a complete set. So really, you never know a champion might have used Absolutely. that. Absolutely, yeah, you had no idea at Quite all. possible, well, isn't it? In the same box, in the same bag, there was these. I was wow. Interested on that. That's, that's an old tea peg. A modern day tea peg, would push, push into the ground. So you push that into the ground and then place a the ball on top. Yeah. As so. That's right. In those days, that would just sit on top of the floor. The ball would sit on top. And the feather would be so once the guys hit the shot, the ball disappears. If the tee goes anywhere, they would be able to find the tee peg afterwards. So makers who were the most sought after would be someone like um, Tom Morris, um, a company called Forgan. Um, they made some very rare golf clubs. And they could go up anything up to hundred thousand pounds <laughs> golf has been around for over 500 years and antique clubs can be very collectible clubs with a significant history associated with a celebrated player or a famous maker will command the highest price like this 18th century putter in 2007 it was sold by Sotheby's for over 120,000 pounds so is Diana and Mick's hoard par for the course so you wouldn't mind having a go at one of these? <laughs> I'm not sure I'd be very good with these now. No. <laughs> As to evaluation, it'd be very difficult to tell. I think that the ones that match um, would certainly be slightly more attractive at auction. It's not something that I'd particularly be interested in, no. personally, but I certainly think you know, at auction it'd be, it'd be worth putting them in. So with no sale here, what will Diana and Mick do with the clubs? We're waiting to go to the auction with them and hope for the best. We might be luck lucky and get surprised, or we might, <laughs> we might be bringing them home again. Auctioning the clubs might put a few pennies in their granddaughter's wedding pot. This is one bad habit I've got to crack. Back to Debbie and her collection of clutter. It's a daunting jumble of boxes, bags and memories. These again were my mum's. I think somebody bought them when she retired from, oh, right. from work. So did she have them on display in the house? <sighs> no. This is what happens, isn't it? People yeah. give you things I mean, and you feel obviously obliged. obviously wall plates because... Yes. Yes. Yeah. Fashions change, don't mm, they? I they mean, do. Uh, so what you're saying is you don't particularly like them? Um, oh, no. Are there any bits that you think you might want to hold on to? There probably will be as, as I go through. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, obviously, because it's things that were bought for my mum. Mm -hmm. um, They're not... For you? They're not, no. no. So, um... So you feel OK about...? Yeah, yeah. Should we put this in the charity pile? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody will buy it. Um, like yeah. mother, like daughter is the phrase that comes that's... to mind. I mean, all this, yeah. that can be charity as well. OK. That's... Fine. I want to keep yes. that. That's my... Um, this? Yeah. Is that OK? Yes. Well, if you'll use it, will you use it? Will you use it? Is that for the key lime pine you never made for work? Yeah. Right, then now it goes to charity. It goes... Don't you want it? No. Okay. It goes to charity. I don't think it's that pretty. 
Well done, Lucia. At least someone's getting the message. But time is against us if we want to decide what's worth going to auction, so we need to get our skates on. You're not keeping an old club, are no. you? No, no. We're not getting on too good here, I'm afraid. I can see us coming to blows before this is all finished. He's still looking at things to, in his mind. He wants to keep it, that's why. And I'm trying to... I'd say just chuck it all, but... That's a rubbish, rubbish. Oh, no. Skip. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's rubbish as well. You tell him, Diana. So, is that a keeper, do you think? Personally, don't want any of this stuff back indoors. Diana is on a roll, and the cell pile is building fast. Lucia is tackling the job with ruthless efficiency. That's See, empty. This is the, you sure? Yeah, I've looked at it. But Debbie's having trouble putting the finishing touches to her keep, sell and skip piles. And there's one item she's come across that stirred up some precious memories of her childhood. And tell me about this little fellow here. He's a little bit uh, worse for wear, yeah, isn't he? A little, little bit, bit bare, bare now. Um, I think it's always been in various houses at the loft or <laughs> the last in few the years it's been down the cellar and uh, I'm surprised, you know, it's uh, it's not a bit more worse for wear, but um, that's as old as I am, nearly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's funny, isn't it? Because it's always been around, but actually never played with. Mm. Well, obviously, I mean... <laughs> I mean, my children would just rub their nose up at that. <laughs> it's time to uh, let her go, I think. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I mm -hmm. mean, she's just not doing anything. No, she's not, is she? <laughs> Except taking up space, really. Yeah. So it looks like dear old Sally could be finding a new owner. It's been an emotional time for Debbie, but well worth the effort. Time's up. Both pairs have managed to sort their items into keep, skip, and sell piles. I think we're uh, pretty much done, I think. Not much in Diana and Mick's keep pile, but skip, charity, and sell look pretty healthy. And it looks like Sentimental Debbie's sell pile is surprisingly large. But more importantly, are there any hidden treasures buried among them? Coming up, has Debbie got too much on her plate? Can I give you an IOU? No. <laughs> Have Diana and Mick back to winner? I think it's a difficult one because he is a one-off item. And will they be cashing in at auction? Welcome back to Storage Orders, where I'm opening the doors on items long forgotten by their loved ones. For Debbie, aided by her friend Lucia, it's been tough going taking a trip down memory lane, but I think we've managed to get her to get rid of the clutter. Diana and Mick have a haul that's been built up over a lifetime's hoarding, and storing it has cost over £2,000 over the past four years. Now it's time to find out if there's any value in their hoards. I've called on antiques expert Perry Field to look through Debbie's items. Perry's been wrapped up in the world of antiques since his youth, so what's he uncovered among Debbie's haul? So, Perry, what do you think of what Lucia and Deborah have brought to the table for you? Well, I think we've got a very interesting collection. Let's start here, where we've got a selection of jewellery. Now there is silver, there's gold, there's costume jewellery, there's some coins. I think this makes a really interesting lot. We've got a powder compact here and an old-fashioned cigarette case which will just pop open there. Oh, we've got some old mm. badges inside too. So it's a really good lot at auction. These are nine carat gold, right. so that's kind of nice. And you're probably looking at sort of 40 to 60 pounds, something in that region, I would have said. This is lovely. As you can see, the quality is really there. Mm. Beautifully gilded. On the back, the Royal Dalton stamp there. I know, again, you haven't got a full set. Doesn't really matter. People will buy it and add it to their existing set, so... No problem there. Good auction lot, mm. very good auction lot. You've got mm. Mall Dalton. You obviously like the Royal Dalton factory. That was um, a christening gift of mine. Well, it, it's yeah. lovely. Yours. Yeah. Oh. That's really sweet. This is Bunnykins. It's the mm -hmm. Bunnykins range. Yeah. This has been going for probably since the 1930s. This is obviously more modern. We won't ask you how, mm. how old you are. But this is a lovely set. This is very saleable. Yeah. And I would put it with this bowl. This is another Dalton piece here. But that makes a nice lot. And people collect Bunnykins. 20 to 30 pounds. Right. There again, I would have said. And then we've got... Somebody was riding a horse, I assume. <laughs> yeah. Who was that? Not me. <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's two, there's two helmets. Yeah, so one's my daughter's, I think. OK. Yeah. Do you still ride? 
Not now, no. Well, I think somebody should get the benefit of it. You've yeah. got lots of bits and pieces that go with it and the boots, so, mm. so that's pretty good. Mm. Then we've got some collectible plates here. Um, this is part of a set mm -hmm. that you've got from Danbury Mint. These are limited yeah. editions. Not wildly collectible, yeah. but some people do like them. And of course, the theme being horses, and I can see you obviously like your horses, yeah. um, is, is a lovely subject. So I will put them all together as one lot. After what Perry said about the sort of possible valuations, are you happy to let all of this possibly be sold if you had reserves on them? Yeah, perhaps um, a reserve on a few of the items. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I, think, I think the worst is over now. With Lucia's help, Debbie's done a good job of getting a head round what she's actually been hanging on to. Perry's decided to group some of the smaller items and thinks there's a nice little lot to take to auction. Among the items going to auction is the collection of jewellery with an estimate of 40 to 60 pounds, Debbie's riding equipment with a 70 to 100 pound estimate, the Royal Doulton Rondo set with an estimate of 50 to 80 pounds, the Royal Doulton Bunnikin set, some Burlington cabinet plates, and a collection of Ainsley porcelain, all listed at between 20 to 30 pounds. And not forgetting Sally, the push-along dog, with a 30 to 40 pound estimate. That's a great selection to take to auction, but there was also a set of Royal Doulton plates which Perry thought would benefit from closer inspection. So I've sent them to see David Ward, who's been dealing in period porcelain and collectible china for the past 25 years. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Can I take that heavy box off you? Thank you. So what does David think of Debbie's plates? Well, Royal Dalton is one of the really traditional English manufacturers, um, established in about uh, 1815. There is potentially a good demand for Royal Dalton china if it's been made in the UK. We grade all our china here. So what we call green grade is it's in very good condition for its age. There are no chips, there are no cracks, there's no obvious marking on it. The gold is still in good condition. Alongside English Renaissance, Carlisle and Coronet are also collectible Royal Doulton ranges. Ceramics can make huge figures at auction. Recently, a Chinese bowl dating back over a thousand years sold for $2.2 million at Sotheby's. It was originally bought at a yard sale for $3. So, with that in mind, has Debbie been storing a forgotten fortune? Did you never use them, Debbie? Never, no. These have never been they're used? They're too pretty, no. I So think. they're green quality, aren't they? Um, <laughs> they could be. Yes, I think they should be. What would you offer for the set? So I think we could go to £100 for that. Hmm. What do you think, girls? Not up to me. Um, I think that's quite a good offer, to be honest. I don't think it's bad. I think it, I might be inclined to recommend taking it. Yeah, yeah. And it's nice to know that it, it is um, good quality. It's perfect. So it's, it's very good. yeah. I'm really pleased with that, to be honest. Yes? Yeah. Good. OK, so shake I've got to put my hand. So I'm going to put my hand in my pocket, have I now? Yeah. And try and find <laughs> £100. Let's hope to goodness I've got £100 in here. Can I give you an IOU? No. no. <laughs> Perry's advice here has paid off. Knowing where to sell your items is so important. Targeting a dealer in this niche market has clearly paid dividends for Debbie. Even though it's quite hard to let them go, I think it's best because... Um, they would have just been sitting around, probably still wrapped in newspaper. So it would be nice for them to go to somebody who's going to make some use of them. We've now come to Chiswick Auction House to see if the rest of Debbie's hoard can raise some more cash and help get her family on that holiday. How are you feeling about the auction today? Uh, quite positive. And, oh, dare I say it, I'm not... I'm not really bothered if I have to take some things home. Why is that? Because I'm just naturally a, a hoarder and I think I'll... She's like <laughs> nothing? I have, I have. It's been a positive, positive thing. But all I'm saying is, if everything doesn't go, I won't be too disappointed. Is there anything that you're worried about letting go of? If there was one thing that I'd like to take back, it would be Sally. Sally, mm. the push-along dog? Yeah. Oh. I wonder if Debbie actually wants to let any of her items go. The auction's about to begin, but there's just time to see what auctioneer Matthew Caddick thinks of today's lots. Deborah Ward, 
has brought us along some crockery, some jewellery and some toys, amongst other things. And it's a good little mix of items to, to present in auction. Um, there's good names in amongst it like Dalton and Triang and costume jewellery is always of interest at the right price. So I think she's brought a nice interesting mix of items along. Particular interest for our buyers more than likely will be the costume jewellery. Um, based on the fact that they're always here to buy it, they're interested in huge bulk lots or even interesting selected trays. And what we've got here is a fairly moderately priced collection of costume jewellery. So I expect that will sell quite comfortably today. So will today's bidders be in a generous mood? It's time to find out as Debbie's first item comes under the hammer. Lot number 50A now. First up are the Burlington cabinet plates, which Perry valued at 20 to 30 pounds. Thank goodness you haven't got a reserve on these. 11 there, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30, 32, at 30 pounds, maybe. We'd take two now, 30 pounds. I think we've got there, selling at 30 pounds. 170, 30 pounds. That's, yeah, that's good. Well, that's a good start for Debbie. The plate's fetching the very top of Perry's estimate. Sadly, the Royal Dalton Rondo and Bunnikin sets fail to sell. Next is Debbie's horse riding equipment with an estimate of 70 to 100 pounds. Give your kids this this Christmas, promise them the pony next Christmas. By next Christmas, they'll have forgotten all about it. It's a lot for the money. £50 start me. £30 for it. A bit of £30. £20 for it. There's got to be a fancy dress party coming up. £20 I'm bidding to, I'll take now. £20, take two. Add £22 there, £25, £28, <laughs> and £30, £32. Add £30, see to take two now. £30, take two. I can't squeeze any more out of you then at £30. We've done the selling 30 Sold for a disappointing £30, but every little helps. I'm keeping my fingers crossed the bidders take a shine to Debbie's jewellery, valued at £40 to £60. £65, I'll take £70 in the room. £70's there, £75, £80, £5, £90, £5, £100, £200, £300, £400, £500, £600, £700, £800, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1000, £1
Debbie managed to sell a collection of Royal Dalton China direct to a specialist dealer and then made £194 selling some more at auction. Debbie has now cleared out her entire unit and is on the way to taking her family on that much needed holiday. Now it's time to catch up with Diana and Mick Strank, lifetime magpies and retired removers and storers. They want to get rid of some of their collections and hope to raise extra cash for their granddaughter's impending wedding. I've called on antiques expert Paul Hayes to look through their items and help them sort out their storage once and for all. So, have Mick and Diana inherited a fortune within the hand-me-down hoard? The first one is this one. Okay, this is uh, Royal Dalton. Yeah. But it's Dalton Flambe. And it's a red glaze that Dalton experimented with in the 1950s, oh, yes. 1960s. And what they would do is put the picture underneath the glaze, the red glaze goes over the top, and they did a whole range of animals, things like tigers and rocks and that sort of thing. Mm. You're looking between 50 and 80 pounds. Uh, now, one thing you did buy was this vase, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so was that expensive when you bought it, do you remember? No, so many years ago, no. About five pounds, I we think, wouldn't it? We wouldn't have paid five. much. Right. I wanted it for flower arranging, really. So this is called Art Nouveau. It's very organic, very flowing, uh, very, very collectible. Uh, so what I've decided to do with this lot is to put all these metal items together. So you've got some pewter, yeah. you've got a first oh, yeah, world war idea. brass shell, yeah. you've got a biscuit box. Mm -hmm. All right, so that lot there, you're looking sort of 60 to £100. Pounds. Uh, now, obviously, your father was an engineer, so yeah, I, take it, I take it these side, came from your, yeah. from your dad, didn't yeah. Yeah. Right. OK, so was he in the habit of studying things? And no, I, and things? I mean, he was also a removal man. So. Right. <laughs> well, I think these are, are wonderful items. Uh, these are field microscopes, and the idea was they were for a student, and they'd have them in a mahogany box. If they went into auction together, um, I can imagine you're looking between 80 and £120 pounds yeah. for oh, those. Oh, that's pretty good, then. How does that sound? Very good, good yeah. yeah. All right. Tell me again where this uh, this bottle came from. That was this bottle. Yeah, yeah, she gave gave him that before he, she died, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, th these are little novelties, and uh, people do collect this wonderful sort of uh, nautical antiques, you know. So what what I, what I thought to do with that one? That's a good selling item, uh, but it also this this tile here oh, came yes. to mind. I thought maybe put these two together because this is quite a nice country sort of item, yeah, a Minton yeah. tile. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, probably part of a fireplace or perhaps a, a kitchen. It's been set into something, this one. Uh, but if I say sort of 30 to 50 pounds. Diana and Mick have done a great job sorting through the effects of a lifetime's collecting. There's a good selection to choose from, but the items Paul thinks will do well at auction are the red Royal Dalton Flambe vase, estimated at 50 to 80 pounds, the antique microscopes with an 80 to 120 pound estimate, Mix mum's ship in a bottle together with a mint and towel with an estimate of 30 to 50 pounds. And the silver biscuit jar and the pewter Art Nouveau vase, which he has valued at 60 to 100 pounds. Paul has also selected a Royal Albert dinner service estimated at 50 to 100 pounds. A collection of walking sticks valued at 50 to 80 pounds. A selection of limited edition prints, which could raise between 100 to 200 pounds. Mick and Diana are also adding the golf clubs, which Paul estimates at 40 to 60 pounds. So, a healthy hoard. But there was an unusual vintage puppet to which Paul took a bit of a shine. Well, I think he's great. I think what we need to do is a bit of a, a research journey on this, and maybe to find somebody that deals in theatrical things or toys, yeah. you yeah. know, somebody that understands this particular market. I think it's a good idea, and I've sent them off to see Paul Forbes, who's been selling toys and dolls to the collectors of Kent for the past 20 years. It looks to me as if it could be a one-off scratch-made item, yeah. And who would use something like that, then? Would it be a, a circus or a, a theatre, do you think, or a...? I think, given its size, it's certainly going to be a commercial item. It's not, it, a, it's child's. not a child's puppet. No, it's too no. heavy, isn't it? It's too heavy, it's too large. Yeah. And I think that's made to either be for theatrical or possibly touring entertainer. We were thinking it was Muffin the Mule, weren't yeah. we, for, yeah. for a while, No, it? I think this character predates Muffin, although there are some sort of similar traits in terms of colour and... Appearance. There is a significant market in rare puppets, with Pelham being one of the most notable producers. Their puppets from the 50s and 60s are very collectible. So, will Diana and Mick's horse be prize puppet or stage dummy? I think he's a difficult one because he is a one-off item, but given his overall condition, the quality of the item, 
I would say he's somewhere in the region of 50 to 70 pounds. If, if you wanted to sell it, and it is genuinely something that Paul wanted to buy, I mean, is, is there a middle ground there that you could find? 55, 60 would be, be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I need to... Whatever you... Um, I don't, don't want to well, take it back. Well, on my side of the fence, I'd be looking at the lower end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. of course, yeah, you would be. The gist of that, I think, is Paul's offered 55 pounds, is that right? Yeah. And is that agreeable with yourselves? Uh, yeah, that's... That's fine, yeah. yes. Yeah? Okay. Are you, you're both happy? You're all happy about that? Yeah. All yeah. right, well, I think you better shake hands and that's what you do. Right. Thank you. Thank there you. you go, and you, Michael. He's going to a good home. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, paying a trip to a specialist has clearly paid dividends. Yeah, we was quite pleased yeah, with the offer, weren't we? Yeah, very, very pleased. It's not worth, you know, we're not bothered in going to an auction, really, because we feel that's a good enough price anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, with £55 already in the pot, we're back at the auction to see if the rest of their items can help with the wedding fund. Is there anything on your list here that you're a bit reluctant to say goodbye to? Uh, there's a, a ship in the bottle that was my mother's. Oh, that, really? That's the only thing. I put reserve on that. Aha. Uh -huh. so. You're in two minds about that. Yeah, I don't mind if that doesn't sell. Fine, OK. No, so, have you made a mental calculation of how much you'd like to make today? Yes, yeah, so I sort of hoped around about £500, but... And any money raised today goes towards your granddaughter's wedding. Yes, yeah. yes. she's got it's very expensive taste, I'm afraid. It's exciting, so you've got a real purpose for today, yeah. then. The auction's about to begin, but there's just time to hear what auctioneer Matthew Caddock thinks of their lots. We've got everything here from, from microscopes to furniture to, to art, so it's a good uh, overall collection of items for auction. We've got some WMF. Uh, Art Nouveau Pewter. Now, it's a good factory, it's a good period, and these things tend to get sold fairly well. The uh, Austrian Reich binoculars are actually quite a curiosity. Whether they're too expensive or not, we're about to find out, but they're certainly an interesting item. Well, that sounds promising. Lot number 38. Let's see, as the first lot, the microscopes come under the bidder's scrutiny with their estimate of up to £120. £110, £120, £120 120 130 £140. Are we all done then? At £130. At £140, pounds. are we all done selling £140? You please. Look at those things, yeah, you had them under his winter so much. Isn't that horrible? £140, pounds. that's an excellent start. Next is Mix Mum ship in a bottle and a mint and towel. Mick's not that desperate to see this sail away, so he's put in a reserve of £30. Take 30 in the room. £30 is there, it beats the commission middle, and 32 is next. At £30, are we done? Right on estimate, selling at £30 and gone then. £30, right on the reserve. The Art Nouveau vase and the silver biscuit barrel, together with some other metalware, sells below its estimate for £42. And the Royal Albert dinner service, estimated at 50 to 100 pounds, sells for 45 pounds. Next is that collection of walking sticks, which Paul has valued at 50 to 80 pounds. At 70 pounds, 75, 85, 95, 100, 110. Your bit at 110 beats the commissioners. 120 is next. At 110 pounds, standing in the middle of the room, take 120 now. At 110 pounds, I think we've done, aren't we? 110 pounds and selling. 110. 110. Way yeah. above. They've walked out of the auction room at £110, nearly double the estimate. And those golf clubs Mick and Diana decided to sell raised a further £50. Last but not least, the selection of prints, which have been split into five lots. The first four have already raised £345. So, how will the final lot fare? And I'm starting me at £200. I'll take 210 in the room at £200. Oh, £200. my God! My God! My God! £240, £250, £260, £270. So ready at 280, 290. 350, 360, 370, 380, 390. This is incredible. The prints have aroused substantial interest. 20, 540, 560, 580, Can you 700, this? and 50. Are you paying attention? 750, 750. 750. All done then, are we? At 750 pounds. Make no mistake, I'm going to sell it at 750. Your bid, sir, 750. £750. Oh, Estimate £1 to £200. Pounds. Yeah. That's fantastic news, as the lot was only valued at around £100 to £200. Pounds. What a lovely surprise to end the day. Are you regretting now that you said um, earlier on that any money raised is going to help <laughs> out see it as wedding? <laughs> no, not really, because, uh, you know, weddings are very expensive. And, and very special. Know, yes. They are. What about your... Your yeah. mum's shipping the bottle. Yeah, I'm a bit sad about that, but uh, 
You weren't tempted to stick your hand out, were you? No, it's gone now. I've, I've got another ship in a bottle at home. Oh, anyway. have you? Yeah. yeah, don't worry about it. You've still got loads of stuff at home, <laughs> So the items featured at auction today made a total of £1,349 after commission. Plus, they made £55 selling the horse puppet to the specialist. That makes a total of £1,404. So, Mick, has this made you feel tempted to clear out a bit at home and sell that stuff uh, on? Yes, yeah, I've still got a lot of stuff I could take to auction, so... Definitely. I, yeah, I probably will think about it. Yeah? Great fun. I think you'd be back to auction yeah. again, I think actually. he will have to. Yeah, with your encouragement. Yeah, Diana. yeah, or my nagging, probably. That's what Isn't I mean. It? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a bit of a battle for lifelong collectors, Diana and Mick but they've made real inroads into a collection that's taken years to build up. And they can now look forward to the future as they've made a real difference to their granddaughter's wedding fund. I'm so pleased that today's hoarders have made progress and downsized their units. Remember, storage is for the short term and not for life. Join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders. <laughs>